In today's video we're going to pick up where we left off in our little game called Brick Smash. As you can see here, this is basically what our game is going to be looking like, where we've got a little paddle that hits the ball up in the air and knocks away those bricks. Once you've knocked all those bricks out of the way, you win the game. You've only got three lives to do that, so you have to be careful that you don't hit the bombs or let the ball drop past the paddle. Okay, you already know this because we talked about it in the first tutorial, so just to recap, we should have all our sprites loaded in, we should have our two sounds in, all our sprites should be converted to objects and we've got two rooms made up. Okay, what we're going to do in this part of the tutorial is the programming side of things. So we're going to code up our game and actually make things move and work properly. So we're going to start today by opening up our object ball. So just go over to your objects and double click on object ball. And the first thing we want to do is get this ball moving around the page. And the way we do that is we add an event in and it's going to be a create event. So when this ball is first created, we want to tell it to move. So right click your mouse on this bunch of red arrows and the directions we want to move in are diagonal directions. Okay, so click those four arrows in the corner of that square, set your speed to five and click on OK. That's going to get our ball moving. The next thing we want to do is make a collision event with the ball and these yellow, orange, red and star blocks. Okay, when we run into those blocks we want those blocks to disappear as well as a few other things. So let's do that now. Still in an object ball we're going to add another event. It's going to be a collision event and we'll start with object orange. Okay, on object orange the first thing we want to do is go to our main one tab and play a sound. So right click your mouse on that grey speaker and select the hit sound loop will be set to false because we only want to play that sound once so as soon as our ball has a collision with the orange block it's going to play the sound of it being hit the second thing we're going to do is make that ball bounce off that block so we go back to our move tab and select this arrow just bouncing off a blue wall here it is the bounce action you don't need to change anything there so just click on OK so as soon as our ball hits that block it bounces off it the next thing we want to happen is for that block to be destroyed. So when the ball hits the block, we're just going to go to our main one tab and select this little recycle bin here, which is the destroy instance option. So what it does, instead of destroying itself, I want you to choose other. Okay, that means it's going to destroy the orange block, the other thing that the ball collides with. And finally, we're going to give ourselves a score. So go down to the score tab, Choose the first bunch of yellow dots in the grey square there. And just can't remember if the orange was the easiest or the hardest blocks to get. Let me have a look. Orange are one of the hardest blocks to get. Okay, so you want to set yourself a higher score than the others. So we might set our score to 50 for that. And make sure you check this relative box down the bottom. That way your score will continue to add up. So they're the four actions we need need to happen when we have a collision with our orange block. Now we need to put in the same sort of stuff for the yellow block, red block and star block. So a quick way to do it is right click your mouse on this object orange collision event and go to duplicate event. Okay, when the box comes up just click collision and this time it'll be with the yellow block. And what that does is makes a collision event with the yellow block and uses the exact same code. The only thing we need to change is this bottom one with the score. Okay, the yellow blocks are slightly easier to hit than the orange ones, so we'll just reduce the score to 30 and click OK. Now we just have to do the red block as well, so we're going to right click on object yellow collision event and duplicate that. This time it will be a collision with the red block. Okay, so it makes in a collision event for the red block and the ball and it has the same bunch of actions. Just double click on this set score and we'll give ourselves 10 points every time we hit a red block. Everything else should be fine. Finally we're going to duplicate that one more time and we're going to put in a collision with the star block. So when the ball hits the star we want to get some big points because they are right at the top of the grid so they are the hardest to get so let's get a hundred points every time we hit one of the star blocks. Alrighty so that's all our blocks sorted out. The next thing that we need to code is when we have a collision event with the wall. 
So still on this object ball, we're going to add in another event and put in a collision with the wall. And this is quite an easy one. Once the ball hits the wall, all we want it to do, just go to your Move tab, is bounce back off it. So right-click your mouse on the Bounce action again, and click on OK. Okay, so that's all we do for that one. The next thing we want to do, we want to add an event, and this time it's going to be a collision with the paddle. So when the ball hits the paddle, we want to just bounce off it and go back up in the air. So what we do, two things. First of all, play a sound. So in your main one tab, select the hit sound. Loop will be false because we just want it to play once. And then like we've been doing on the other options, we just want that ball to bounce off the paddle. So go back to your bounce action and click OK. So there's our two actions for collision with the paddle. Uh, the next one we're going to put in, we'll add another event. It's going to be a collision with the bomb. Okay, we've got some bombs in our game that we've got to try and avoid. But if we do have a collision with them, we've got a few things that we need to do. The first one in the main one tab is play a sound. And we've got a different sound for the, that one. It's called sound lose. Loop will be false. Okay, we just have to play a sound as if the person has died in the game. Um, we're going to have some lives in our game. We've got three lives in our game, so what we're going to do is go down to our score panel here. And the first love heart there in the grey rectangle, or grey square, sorry, you want to set our lives to minus one and check relative. That just takes one of our lives away from us. Then we want our level to restart. And the way we do that, we go back to the move tab, we just want to move the ball and the paddle back to their starting positions. So we've got this little jump to start position action here. That's the X and the light bulb. So what we want to do is move the ball back to the starting position to begin with, so just move itself, click OK. Then we want to move the paddle. So we do the same action again by right clicking on it, but this time we choose an object and we choose the paddle to go back to the start position. Okay, and finally, we want to destroy the bomb. So once we hit the bomb, we want it to just disappear as if it's blown up. So in the main one tab, just hit that recycle bin and choose other. That way it'll just blow up the other thing the ball hits, which is the bomb. Okay, so that's a bit of a confusing one. Let's just quickly go through that again. We've got the ball having a collision with the bomb. Okay, when we hit the bomb, we play a sound that we've lost a life, then we lose a life, so it'll update on our score panel when we make that, that we've lost one life. We move the ball back to the start position, we move the paddle back to the start position, and then we destroy the bomb itself. Okay, so once you go through it step by step, it does start to make sense. Another thing we want to do to lose lives is when this ball flies outside the room. So when we miss the paddle and it goes below uh, the paddle, it will leave the room. So we're going to add in an event and go to Other. In the Other option, we go down, down, down. Where is it? Oh, it's the first one, sorry. Outside Room. Okay, so in the Other option, choose Outside Room. So when this ball goes outside the room, what we want to do is play a sound to show that we've just lost a life. So in your main one tab, select the sounds and choose sound lose. Loop will be false. Next thing we're going to do is set our lives. So in your score tab, choose the first love heart there. Set your lives to minus one so you've just lost one life. And make sure you check relative. And then we want to jump the ball and the paddle back to their starting positions again. Okay, so in the move tab, Hit this one with the little X and the light bulb. First of all, you move itself, so that's the ball. We move itself to its start position. And then we'll put in that jump to position one again. And we're going to choose an object. And we're choosing the paddle. Okay, so when the ball leaves the room, play a sound that we've lost a life. Take off one life from our score panel. Put the ball and the paddle back to their starting positions, and we'll go again. Alrighty. So that's looking pretty good. Um, the other thing, I think it's the last thing as well that we need to put on this object ball, is a step event. Okay, so go to step and choose step. Now what we're stepping through here is we're going to count each of these orange, yellow, red and star blocks on the screen. 
And once they all equal zero, which means we've destroyed all of those blocks, you've won the game. So we need to tell the user that they've won the game once they've destroyed all the blocks. Okay, so what we're going to do is go to the main, no, sorry, the control tab. And we're going to select this little blue ball with the one, two, three underneath it. It's the test instance count. And what you want to do is count the orange objects on the screen. And when their number gets to zero, that's when we're going to know that all the orange blocks are gone. Okay, so we're just going to do this for each of the blocks. So I'm going to right click back on the one, two, three there. Choose the yellow block this time. Number is zero. Operation is equal to. Click OK. Do that again. We'll choose the red block. Click OK. And put that in one more time now. This time it's the star block. And click OK. So what we're doing there is just checking that all four of our different blocks have been completely destroyed and that there are zero instances left of those blocks on our screen. When that occurs, we want to do two things. So we're going to start a block of events. So right click on this up arrow to start a new block of events. The first one is in the main two tab. It's this little speech bubble. You display a message. Just say, well done. You win and click OK. After you display a message, the game's over, so you can end the game. So hit this little red button here, which will end the game. Back in the control tab now, you can hit the down arrow here to end that block of events. And I think that's all we're going to need for that step event. So we count up yeah, all four of the blocks and make sure that they're all being knocked out of the way. When that happens, tell the user they've won and then close the game. Alright, so I think that's all we need on our object ball. That's a lot of coding. We'll click OK. We will test in a moment. It's just one last thing we need to put in before we do test. Remember this splash screen of ours has a play button. So we need to tell the computer when somebody clicks on that play button, we need to start our game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop down to object, where is it? Um, object play, there it is. Open up object play. I just want you to add an event on the object play and that's going to be a mouse event and it's going to be the left button. Okay. When you press your left mouse button on the play button, it's a simple one, just go to your main one tab and choose that go to next room. It's a little arrow pointing to the right inside the grey square there. Uh, let's click OK. Let's give this game a test run now. So we're going to press the green play button at the top we're looking for a few things here, we'll see what happens. Okay, so our splash screen loads up. What we're looking for when we press this play button is for our game to start. Now not much is going to happen in this game just yet. It does bounce off the walls, makes the bricks disappear. I can't move my paddle at the bottom yet, so I'm just going to have to sit there and watch this for a minute. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay, so we might as well get this paddle working now so we can move the paddle left and right. So open up your object paddle, which is down here. Let's move these over into the middle. So we need to add in an event. Okay, the first one, to make it move, it's going to be a keyboard event. Let's start with the left key. When we press the left key, we simply want to make it move. So right click on your bunch of red arrows, we want it to move to the left, and the speed we're going at today is 6. Click OK. We're going to add in another keyboard event now, and it's going to be for the right key. Do the same thing, just tell it to move to the right at a speed of 6 as well. One last keyboard event we need to put in is the no key event. So when we're not pressing any keys at all, we just need to tell our paddle to sit still. So choose that middle option there, which tells it to stop moving, make sure the speed is zero. Click on OK. The other thing we need to put in here is a collision with the wall. So when the paddle hits the side wall, it stops moving and doesn't uh, just go straight over the top of the wall and leave the game. So add in an event, choose a collision with the wall, and the same again, just tell it to stop moving. So that middle option set to zero speed. Click OK. Is that all we need on the paddle? Okay, so let's give that a test run and make sure our paddle is working. OK, 
Okay, so when I press the left and right keys now, you can see my paddle moving left and right. Just hit this ball back up for a sec. Watch when I hit the walls. Okay, I'm still trying to press left, but it stops when it hits that purple wall. Okay, so our game's looking really good now. We are getting close to finishing. Now, uh, the next thing we might add in is the score. Okay, so look through your objects, find your object score. There's a few things we need to do here. First thing is a create event. So when our score panel is first created, we want to set our lives to three. So in your score tab here, the first option, set Oops, that's the score, sorry. We want to go down here and set the lives, so the first love heart option. I'll just delete that set score. Okay, so set our lives to three and click OK. So that's easy. When our scoreboard's created, we have three lives. The next thing we're going to do is add an event in, and it's going to be a draw event. We're going to draw a scoreboard on the screen. Okay. And to draw the scoreboard, we're going to do a few things. First of all, go down to your Draw tab at the bottom of the page. We're going to choose the colour for our writing of our score panel, and that colour is going to be white. You can choose another light colour if you want, but I'm just going to stick with white. Uh, we're going to draw the value of the score next using the Score tab here. We just need to quickly go over to Level 1 and work out where we want this score panel to go. We want it to go down here and this box I'd say, so X, you can see our coordinates down here, X and Y values, so X is about 32 and Y is around 480, so 32 and 480. So let's draw the score, so we click this bunch of yellow dots on the end here this time, and you should get an X and Y value to type in, so 32 for the X, I think it was 480 for the Y, Leave the caption as score and click on OK. The other thing we want to do is draw the number of lives we've got on the page. So looking in our level 1 again, we want to move them across a bit. So we might go across over to here. 160 by 480 is our coordinates. So X is 160, Y is 480. Okay, so we'll give that a go. Uh, so the way we draw our lives is you can do it that way if you want text or if you want to use a picture you choose this op little one down the bottom here to so draw life images so our x is 160 y is 480 and the sprite or the picture we want to use to represent our lives is our little love heart our life symbol we'll click ok Last thing I want to put in is when we run out of lives, we need to tell the user that they've lost the game and they need to start again. So we add in an event. It's an other event and it's no more lives. Okay, so when we've got no more lives, we're going to go to the main two tab and display a message. That message will be bad luck. Whoops, I might do capitals. Bad luck. You've lost. Please try again. Click OK. And to allow the user to try again, instead of closing our game down, we can choose these green arrows here to restart the game. Alrighty. So that's looking good. Let's go give that a test run. Um, the bit I'm worried about is the score and the position of that score panel, but we'll press play and have a look. Okay, so we have got our score panel there, but it's a little bit too high. We need to move it down a bit. Okay, so that's easy enough to do. So let's go back to level one. I'm going to have to just scroll out a little bit here. Yeah, I wasn't wasn't quite um, doing my screen properly before, so it's actually 544 where we want that score panel. So in our score panel here, so we've got draw, we're going to change the 480 to 544 and we'll see how that's going to look. If I do that for both of our scores and our lives, let's change the Y value there to 544. We'll give it another test run and we'll see if that score panel's in a better location. I 
that's a bit better. A little bit lopsided, so you can play around with those X and Y coordinates a bit if you'd like, but it's looking good. If I let this ball drop down to the bottom, you can see we lose a life. Let's do that again. We'll just keep going until we lose all three lives. I can hear the sound working inside my headphones too. Okay, so we hit a bomb. We lose our last life and we get a message saying, Bad luck, you've lost. Please try again. And the game will go back to the start and you can try again. Okay. So that's looking good. I think we've got a fully working game now. The only thing I'd consider changing is just that score panel, trying to move the little love hearts up a little bit. You might just have to change a Y value, but it's not a big issue if you don't want to do that. Okay, so that's how we make our Brick Smash game. Hopefully yours is working. I think it's a pretty fun game, and there's a lot of things that you can add to it to make it a lot more complex. Okay, so if you've got the know-how, and you've got the time, by all means, go for it. To finish off quickly now, all we want to do is, up the top, hit that blue save disk to save your project, and then to make it an actual game into a little application, just go to File, Create Application, and choose where you want to save it. Okay, it'll be called BrickSmash.exe, press Save, and now your game is saved, ready to be taken home and played on your own computer. Alrighty, so enjoy playing BrickSmash.